Al Jazeera Podcasts. Today, what a doctored image tells us about the state of the British royal family. Kate Middleton has been out of the public eye for months, fueling rumors. A photo meant to end them only made things worse. Something about this photo was a little off. Hours later, news agencies pulled it, saying it was edited. I'm Malika Bilal, and this is The Take. If you haven't been following the recent ins and outs of the British royal family, there's a lot to catch up on. So let's go back to January. That's when an announcement came from Kensington Palace, the home of Prince William, the heir to the British throne. The palace said his wife, Kate Middleton, the Princess of Wales, would be undergoing abdominal surgery. She was hospitalized in January for serious abdominal surgery, requiring her to be in hospital two weeks. Now, two months later, aside from a couple of paparazzi shots in cars, she still hasn't been seen in public. Though the palace said she would be out until Easter, Rumors have been going wild for weeks. This whole Kate Middleton situation just gets weirder and weirder. I mean, I know- the movement of people wondering where on earth is Kate Middleton is growing by the day. I don't really care about the royal family, but even I have noticed that there's something weird going on with the royals lately. Last Sunday, which was Mother's Day in the UK, the royal family's social media accounts published a photo. It featured Middleton sitting in a chair, surrounded by her three children. But online sleuths spotted some inconsistencies. The reports were that it was Photoshop, that it was AI, there was details regarding the hands, the amount of fingers. I mean, the thing that I am waiting for now is like a true crime podcast to pop up about where (laughs) is the Princess of Wales, honestly. (laughs) It would do very well, clearly. That's Afia Hagen, a freelance journalist and royal commentator in London. So, Afia, I'm just going to start with the obvious question, one that is making transatlantic headlines. Where on earth is Kate Middleton, the Princess of Wales? Malika, you've asked me a question that I wish I could answer honestly. And honestly, at this particular moment on this Wednesday afternoon, I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) But we've been told that she's at home recovering, right? But from what we've seen this week, we can't always believe what we are being told. Okay, so let's talk about what we've seen this week. Why has the absence of one UK royal caused such a stir? Okay, so if this had been last year, we would have had uh, the Prince and Princess of Wales, you know, cutting ribbons, opening hospitals, kissing babies up and down the country. Mm. But of course, this first quarter of 2024 has been very different because we're in a situation where the Princess of Wales is recovering from this abdominal surgery. You've gone from seeing this particular couple all the time to not seeing them at all. Mm. Now, if you are a royal watcher or even if you just have a vague interest in the royal family, that's unusual. Remember at the same time we did have King Charles III's cancer diagnosis diagnostic tests have identified a form of cancer. The king has been advised by doctors to postpone public facing duties. We weren't told what kind of cancer, the prognosis, or, you know, any recovery time or any stage, but we've seen him. You know, we've seen him going to treatment. We have seen him going to church at Sandringham with his wife, Queen Camilla. We've seen him with Rishi Sunak, but he has cancer and he's ill, right? The Prime Minister, Your Majesty. Good evening, Your Majesty. Very nice to see you. And wonderful. Yeah. Well, yeah, a bit, but <laughs> wonderful. Afraid. Wonderful to see you looking so well. Yeah, so the, the Princess of Wales is conspicuous by her absence. And so it's strange to not even have any kind of comms on a member of the royal family like this. Mm-hmm. Even with the king, we had a picture of him, you know, looking through cards and gifts that people had sent and a statement saying, thank you for all your well wishes. Mm -hmm. Not even that. So what started off as these rumors, nether regions of the internet is now on our mainstream newspapers and people are genuinely asking themselves, 
Is this person okay? Kate Middleton has now been MIA for weeks, and the rumor mill has responded in kind. There's so many conspiracy theories doing mm. the rounds on social media. So, you know, there was rumours that the Princess of Wales was going into the celebrity Big Brother house or that, you know, the Prince of Wales was having an affair and is having an affair. You know, rumours that she might even have passed away. Rumours that she's in a coma. The the rumours have ranged from the sublime to the ridiculous and they get more and more elaborate every single day. And the photoshopping of this picture has just added to that. So, Avia, this made even bigger headlines because of what you just mentioned. It's that photo that viewers said seemed doctored. Mm -hmm. And then several news agencies retracted the photo, which is pretty rare, especially a photo that came from an official source like the palace. Our top story this morning is uh, what should have been an innocuous photograph of the Princess of Wales and her children. And it was released for Mother's Day. Yes, but it has. Talk to me about that photo and why you think that made such waves. You're absolutely right, Malika, in saying that this particular picture just poured fuel on an already pretty big fire. So this picture was released on Mother's Day. Upon first sight, it's the Princess of Wales surrounded by her three children, at Princes George and Louis and Princess Charlotte. And you look at it and you think, oh, she looks well. She's smiling. She looks happy. Kids look cute. She's alive. Great. It's going to squash all those rumors. Just about five minutes later, (laughs) if you look at the image, you can see that it's been manipulated, like around Charlotte's sleeve. There's something odd going on around her um, her skirt. Her waistband seems to be gappy. There's Kate Zip like doesn't seem to meet properly Louis done doing something weird with his fingers around um, Charlotte's knee is blurry one of Kate's hands is completely blurry on the other hand there's no wedding ring mm. I could go on and on and on there was just a lot of, of glaring inconsistencies in, in this picture and then like you so rightly said on the Sunday night it was AFP, the Associated Press Getty and Reuters and then PA Media on the Monday They pulled the image, issued this kill notice, which is very rare. You know, basically the agency saying to clients, don't use this image because we can't verify the source and we think there's been Mm. manipulation. Wow. Like, what? Like, and then you get this statement solely signed by Catherine herself um, saying that, like, you know, amateur photographers, I like to play around with images and I'm sorry for any confusion this image caused and I hope you all had a lovely Mother's Day. And everyone was like, what the heck? First of all, why, oh why, in this current climate, do you think you can release a manipulated image and get away with it? Especially in the age of AI, the age of everyone knowing that they have Photoshop and editing tools at their fingertips and knowing they have to be that much better because people know that. Exactly. But what really baffles me is Kate didn't do this alone. The Princess of Wales not just sent press go on X. She doesn't do that. She has a team around her. It's also an issue of your public relations and communications team have badly let you down. Your team have thrown you under the bus, Princess of Wales, and you are taking the blame. I feel sorry for her, actually, to be honest, because I, I feel that she's been made to take the blame for this. Oh, I'm a silly woman. I've made a silly mistake. Silly old me. What it's done is taken the conspiracy theories who were already at 10, they're now at 100. People are disbelieving and questioning everything. And that's why the trust now, unfortunately, is broken. After the break, how the controversy has played out in the British media. Thank you. 
So, Afia, obviously there are some ethical questions around this whole story, given that what the palace has said officially about this is the princess had a health issue and a surgery in January. So, on the one hand, there is no reason not to believe that she's just recovering from an extensive surgery. But on the other hand, the question arises, do the British royals have an expectation of privacy? And is this intense scrutiny over her whereabouts an invasion of that privacy? So it's a really difficult line to toe, isn't it? Because when it comes to the British royal family, we're being told that they're here to serve and and they, they serve us. Essentially, they work for us, we pay for them, you know, that through taxpayer money, that kind of thing. And so I think people expect, rightly or wrongly, a certain amount of transparency when it comes to them, their lives and things that they're doing. But on the other hand, you and I, everybody has a right to privacy. I mean, if I had had major surgery and I was recovering... No one should come and take a pap shot of me. I'm not going to send a selfie to the group chat when I'm on my hospital bed. Neither would you. You know, everybody has the right to that privacy. But because I think it's this particular family. So when it comes to the health of King Charles III, we were told that he had an enlarged prostate first. And then we were told about his cancer diagnosis. And we were told that it wasn't prostate cancer. But then we weren't told what type of cancer, stage, prognosis, anything like that. The exact nature of the cancer was not disclosed. Closed, but he is beginning his cancer treatment today, perhaps an indication of how serious the diagnosis is. They gave us a little bit, but not everything. And with the Princess of Wales, it's kind of the same thing. So they gave us a little bit, but not enough to make the little bit make sense. Because immediately when you hear a major abdominal surgery, hospital for 10 to 14 days, I mean... Everybody's like, my my goodness, what surgery would keep you in hospital for 10 to 14 days? Because you can push out a baby and, and be home the next day. <laughs> and what is remarkable about the royal family is that the women do push out babies and then they're photographed <laughs> hours or the, the next steps. day. Mm-hmm. Exactly. On the steps of the Linda wing at the hospital, baby in arms, still with that huge bump, you know, with their hair blow dried and in a gorgeous dress and full mm. makeup, like mm-hmm. hours later. Less than two days after arriving here, prince, princess, and baby prince emerged to the cheers of the crowd. Father held baby, mother held baby, looking equally confident. Kate making headlines for leaving the hospital so soon after birth and in heels. It could never be me. I mean, when I gave birth to my daughter, I just honestly, I looked like I'd been shot in the face. <laughs> I could barely walk afterwards. Never mind stand up and basically have full glam in a photo shoot in front of the world's press. That's a heck of a lot of pressure. But if this is the thing that is, they give us these things so we expect more. And I think that's the problem. It's it's that fine line between accountability and transparency that they're trying to toe. But I kind of feel like Lately, they're they're not getting it right. So, Afia, I want to talk about how this has played out in the British media, which has had a sometimes symbiotic relationship and sometimes fractious relationship with the royal family. I know that there are norms surrounding what they do or do not report about in a situation like this, what they do and do not publish when it comes to pictures. Are these just customs or are there actual legal restrictions. So when it comes to the British press and the royal family, you know, they do have this kind of give and take relationship. It's supposed to be informal, but all, you know, your your editors of your major newspaper groups know that there are certain boundaries that they're not going to cross. There's certain stories that might be, you know, widely talked about that they are not going to print. And they do that so that the palace will give them other stories. And so we are kind of in this situation now where, you know, for instance, we did get a paparazzi shot of the Princess of Wales a couple of weeks ago when she was in a car with her mum. Nobody in the UK printed it or had it on television because of this agreement that they have that they don't use um, backyard paparazzi shots, you know, shown everywhere else in the world, but not here. Mm. And they do that so that when 
you know, an official shot comes, you know, perhaps this paper will be first or perhaps that broadcaster will be first. It's all about the give and take. That's why I think social media has become the place where these discussions have happened. And I think because the British media have very much stuck to the rules, as it were, it's given this other side so much oxygen. And so people feel like the British media are lying to them. Or we're being lied to because you're not properly telling us what's what's happening to the Princess of Wales or you're not telling us what kind of cancer the king has, but you know. But actually, mm-hmm. a lot of people in the British media don't know and don't want to find out. Do you think that these stories are in the public's interest? Should the UK press be digging more into them? Well, this is the thing, is that when you look at what the monarchy and, and the royal family are, so the king is an unelected head of state. So he gives assent to laws. He's officially the head of the government. I think we have a right to know about this unelected head of state who is very much involved in the balance of power in our country because these people are essentially going to be the head of the country, the head of the Commonwealth, the head of state of another 14 nations as well, apart from the United Kingdom. Well, finally, Afia, there's been so much chatter about this on social media as we talked about. And I'm looking at one tweet that I pulled up here. It references the Netflix show about the royal family, The Crown, because how could we have this conversation without talking about it? And in particular, it is referencing a moment where Queen Elizabeth is saying, I simply can't retire. Everything would fall apart. Now, this is a fictional account, of course, but Queen Elizabeth II died less than two years ago. And it seems that the royal family is indeed in chaos. How much does this hurt their credibility as an institution funded by the taxpayers long term? I think you're absolutely right in saying that since Queen Elizabeth II passed away, it does seem like the royal family has descended into a little bit of chaos. It's become a bit Kardashian-like, and that's not what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be British aristocracy, right? Earlier on this week, we had Commonwealth Day and the theme of Commonwealth this year is about resilience and common values and and togetherness. And you had the king in his Commonwealth Day speech talking about resilience and togetherness. And I just think to myself, if you don't have unity and togetherness in your family, you cannot preach that to 56 other countries. It's not going to ring true. It's definitely possible to get their house in order. And I think that's something that needs to be done because... What we've seen over the past two years in the royal family, very damaging to the reputation. And that's The Take. This episode was produced by Ashish Malhotra, Chloe Kaylee, and Khalid Sultan, with Veronisa Campana, Miranda Lynn, Amy Walters, Nagin Oliayi, Sonia Bagad, David Enders, Zaina Bezir, and me, Malika Bilal. Alex Roldan is our sound designer. Alexandra Locke is The Take's executive producer, and Nay Alvarez is Al Jazeera's head of audio. We'll be back 